It's the 19th of July, 2016, and well, time for work. I got a surprise in my lunch today. Want to see? This was randomly on there. <laughs> I love my mom, I really do. House of Cards with the family to calm down. We figured out Dad actually likes it, too. We got him watching the second episode. Uh, we paused, though, because... But uh, we paused it, like I said, because they've got to get out to the garden before it gets dark. Then we'll continue afterwards. And if it gets too dark for me and i got to go to bed, conveniences, it'll just continue from where it was. Thank you, Netflix. But this is the sort of thing I needed at... To be honest, today was kind of one of those days for me. I just got tired and frustrated, and I'm, I'm still adjusting to all this overtime at work, if I'm honest. Because the main thing is, whenever I do overtime at work, then the days that I normally walk, I can't walk. And some of you that have been watching for me for a while know that whenever I don't do my exercise, stuff starts happening. It's like my body literally says... How dare you not take care of me? Boom! And, and, and so it begins. I've got a suspicion it won't be lasting too long, though. It's, it's just one of those things. I, I just got a hunch is all. And over time, I might adjust, too. I mean, once I start getting back on at least walking during the weekend, it should help. And tomorrow, I'm probably just going to stay home. I've got some recordings to do anyway, because this weekend's going to be busy for us. Because we've got... The garden, as I said before, and we've got some relatives that are planning on moving the exact same weekend. And we're already signed up to help them, so that's a thing. So schedules around here are going to be a bit thin this weekend. That's just the family schedule. I mean, my personal schedule on Saturday, the same class that I learned how to make this thing at, I'm going to the second one. And I am really looking forward to that. That, that should be fun. I mean, the first one. I've worn this since. I love this freaking thing. And as I said before, back whenever I did take it, things like that are really good for me. They're just times to just relax and do something neat. And I think that's almost an essential thing for every human being. We've got to do stuff like that at times. So, yeah, that's one of my ways of doing it. Speaking of that word, actually, uh, one of the things that I managed to achieve at work is reading the book Essentialism. Or I should say, rather than reading it, finishing it. I had about 30 minutes of it that I just hadn't gotten around to. So yeah, I finished it, and I recommend it. Somehow people are putting snapshots on their snaps. If I can do that, I'll actually snapshot it for you. It worked! But yeah, that's the book, Essentialism by Greg McEwen. I think is how you pronounce it. Sorry if I butchered it. Point is, I think that that book is, no pun intended, essential reading for anybody. And I do mean anybody. For someone like me in particular that does content, so I do sort of have to balance that stuff in my life. It had some fantastic insight. But even if you're not in that sort of line of life, as it were, just I think anyone's life would do well with that book. And then after I finished that up, I went for some lighter affair, and I started my next Discworld book. Reaper Man. So far, it's been hilarious. Without giving too much away, which I just started so I couldn't spoil it if I wanted to, uh, what happens whenever death is forced to retire? Hmm. That's pretty much the whole premise of that book, and like I said, I'm just a couple of hours, I think maybe two hours into it, and so far, fantastic. So part of the 10% Happier course, whenever it's actually, and I am pulling something up very specifically because I'm about to tell you something, but part of the 10% Happier course is that they have videos that accompany each of your nights of meditation, as it were. Giving you a new concept or things of that nature, you know, that sort of thing. Tonight's had an interesting quote in it. So they were talking about the doubting mind, that little voice in our head that says, maybe not. And the difference between that little voice being healthy, as in, maybe I really shouldn't do that, or that voice being something else. 
that voice instead being the times that you know this is good for you and stuff like that, but you keep on saying, I can't. Oh, uh. Okay, maybe not as whiny as that, but the point is, here's a little quote that Joseph, the guy that helps Dan Harris out with this course, but here's what he said. The particular seduction of doubt is that it presents itself in the voice of wisdom. Which means that when that doubting mind really wants to get you, it's going to sound smart. It's going to sound reasonable. That is when it's the most freaking dangerous. Because then, instead of you being able to question it, you don't for a second. That's when suddenly you think, oh, I can't do this. Or maybe they're right. Or, you know, all that horrible stuff. And the thing is, most of those questions that I just said are perfectly fine when they're not in the dangerous space. The idea of maybe you're wrong about something, that's a very good idea to have. But it can be overdone. It can be taken from, let's make sure I'm not a cocky jerk, to I question myself at every single turn of my life. And yeah, it sucks when that happens. I've Everybody has that voice that shows up from time to time. The main thing that defines each and every one of us, though, is whether or not we let that voice actually get to us or not. And again, I don't subscribe to the thing that all doubt is unhealthy doubt, and that's really not what this was trying to make the point of either. Doubt can be healthy if placed in the proper scenario, but it can also be dangerously unhealthy as well. So, when you start getting that questioning thought, think, is this healthy? Is this really? Does this even make sense? Because especially with creative people, those of you that happen to be creative out there, oh yeah, that voice shows up a freaking lot. That's where that old sentiment comes from, right? You are your worst critic. It, yeah, kind of the truth there. Now, after that um, unplanned inspirational talk, I guess, it's... It's time for me to get ready for bed. Well, shave, and then get ready for bed. But there's no other input after I do get the shaving bit done. So, good night, everyone.